Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by on this incredible episode. I am gonna pack it up with a bunch of things. My name is Nelson, you are watching Nature Nell. And today I have a very hot episode. The sun is starting to crack rocks. But with that said, I'm gonna show you guys a mini, mini haul from the last time I went to uh, Othi's. Uh, I brought back a couple of things, like two or three things, not that much, but they're pretty big. I'm gonna show you some blooms that actually are just starting to come out now that I didn't get a chance to show you last time. I said I was gonna start showing you uh, what's in bloom as we uh, go along in the next few months because now we're gonna get a lot more so than we did in the summer because with the heat, you know, a lot of the blooms don't last very long and most of the orchids don't really bloom as much. And there's a surprise back there. I don't know if you can see it from here, but uh, there's new improvements that are going to wow you. It wowed me. It's still in the process of being finished, but at least you will get an idea of what's happening. So we'll, without, <laughs> it's getting my attention. Meet Bruce. <laughs> this is another one of my outdoor cats. He's like a little Batman. You see, he's wearing a mask. See, Bruce, you're, you're a little superstar, Papa. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's go look at some blooms. You wanna go look at some blooms with me? All right, my botanical fam. <laughs> let's start with the haul. Now, last time I did this little three-in-one, some people got confused on i don't know which was your haul and what was the stuff you already had blooming and i'm like i'm going to tell you right now the first three things i'm going to show you three are the haul like that right there <laughs> yes guys from sierra madre one of my favorite people in the world of orchids i got this from their booth is the only one they had this size is a grammatophyllum scriptum as you can see, it's a species. And I had told you guys that for a while I was having issues with um, with grammatophyllums and they were dying. Well, look at this. This one died down to nothing. This was a gift a while back from my buddy Ken over at the Orchid Supply Store. And it died down, see? But if you look at it, it's giving roots on that very top. So it's gonna have a, a cakey growing out of that bulb. I didn't even know you can grow cakeys from grams. And this one as well. This one went down, all that that you see right there died. And so I repotted them, I put them here, and oh my God, it's the magic spot. Because I had them outside and I think the rain was just way too much. So now that I can grow them, I have a beautiful, beautiful size Grammatophyllum. Thank you, C, for bringing it to the show. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. And if you guys want more of these, I believe he has um, a lot more. I don't know if he has this size, but if he doesn't, he will find it. Now, the last time I went to Ophi's, well, second to last, and look who's here. If you guys saw my last bloom, isn't it looking beautiful? My Dendrochylum Magnum. Anyways, let's go back to this because you guys are going to get confused. This was a haul. This piece right here, see how dry it is? Luckily, I filmed it before the flowers fell. So I'm gonna put it in there as an inset. And this is called, hold on, let me grab the tag as you look at the inset. I wanna grab the tag. It is a very beautiful um, bundle. Oh, you know what, I don't, I don't see the tag, let me see, oh yeah. A retusa. There you go. It's a retusa. I can't remember what retusa. Um, Rinkin style retusa, maybe. Um, I'll put it underneath as I usually do. And this beautiful piece I got from my friend Vicky at Vicky's Orchids. Vicky's another one that she doesn't matter how many times I go to Ophi, she always has something absolutely beautiful to showcase or to sell. And um, this was one of them that I really, really fell in love with. And I forgot to show it to you guys the last time, so I'm including it in this one now. So, speaking of Vicky, look at this. Tell me what you guys think about this. 
she had it sitting there. Now you, I did feature it in the in the show when I got there. Teresita took one, and I took the other. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's breathtaking, and the fragrance I can smell from here. It has that traditional Catalia flower fragrance. Look at that. Tell me if that's not beautiful for an art piece to paint that just like that. So I am so so happy to have this. And it's called, she did handwrite it. Let me see if I can. Oh man, this is going to be a little challenging. <laughs> Here we go. Good Life. Something, it's a RLC. Chunja Good Life. Chunya Good Life. And it has an award of merit. Really, really pretty. So that's the three things that I got as far as a haul. See, it was very short and sweet. Um, and I and I figured if I already had the film, I could always inset it for you guys. So I'm probably gonna be doing that more and more. That way I don't lose the opportunity of showing you something. Now, as far as blooms, I wanna show you things that are blooming now that you didn't see last time. This just opened, which is a Xena from Banyong. I really love the yellow on this. It's a pure yellow through and through with slight sepia tones in it. And the Xena does have a beautiful fragrance. You spell it Z-E-N-A, very simple. And me personally, the only place I've seen these are at Banyan. Very beautiful. All right, let me see. I want to make sure that I show you guys the latest because now we get into, um, and if you guys want to see more about this one, the Dendrochillum Magnum, here's up. Go to my last unboxing. This was a beautiful unboxing from, um, uh, from s and Orchids from Hawaii. And you guys can just order directly through him. It really is not that hard. It's actually easier than going and buying it somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to do all the, the traveling. This one is my um, Spotted Charm. And as you guys know, or don't know, I have bought a bunch of these and put them in one. I bought like five. And they were very, very small. They were still, you know, they, they told me it was in blooming size, but I think they were still too small. Now is when it's starting to give me spikes here and there. So this is like the third time it spikes this year from different plants, from different uh, areas. So I have a feeling as it matures a little bit more, this is gonna be a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Now this hasn't started yet. I was hoping I could show you this. Uh, these blooms this is the first time it blooms for me. This is from Pam's, um, not Pam's, uh, Gardino Nursery. It's their Brazilian. And that's the name Dendrobium for Morsum. It's a beautiful white, pure white flower. Now, straight up, check this out. How pretty that is. Now, this guy's. I think it's a Lion Sing. I have another Lion Sing, but this one just bloomed for me. The flower is way bigger. I put this tag because it fell, Vasco Lion Sim. But I think, do you guys know what this is? I don't think this is a Lion Sing, even though it looks like it. You know what, hold on, I got a better idea. I'll tell you if it is right now. There's a very distinctive fragrance to Lion Sing. Guess what? It's a lion sing. I got it right. So here, now that it's down here, it's a lion sing. The reason I know it's because it has a very sharp citrusy lemon smell, like lemon pledge. And these are near to impossible to find now. They're not. Um, they're still waiting to uh, grow. Uh, I heard the the farm that they grow it or the nurseries that they grow it in uh, overseas burnt down or there was some tragedy with it and most of them died and all they have is the seedlings so imagine that takes about a good four to five years 
Now, way up here, I don't know what this is because I did lose a tag, but those are just starting to open. Oh, the lighting is terrible on here. Oh, I'm sorry, the lighting. I... There we go, that's a little better. These, I don't know what they are, guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower, but I really don't know. It's just starting to open. Maybe when it opens completely, I'll share it in my what's in bloom. Because right now it's just way too, too hard. Here, let's find an easier one. This is from Florida Orchid, uh, East Sun Coast Orchids. <laughs> Sorry, it's swinging. <laughs> Big Jim. This comes from Big Jim, and this is from his collection, his crosses. And I love this flower so much. It has a great fragrance. Let me get you the name. It's a cross. But it's just such a pretty flower. And I believe he has a specimen of this. Or at least the mother, I think, of this is like a huge specimen. Look at that, how pretty those spots are in that labellum. The labellum mocks the spots, or spots mark, mock the labellum color. It's a very, very pretty flower. And this, this is showtime. Actually, no, is this showtime? No, this is not showtime. Yeah, it is, it's a showtime. And I got this from Waldor. So wait until you guys see. You know, I'll put the flower in there, I'll set it in there, but look, it has three beautiful spikes. I can't wait to see that. And it is a show. Ooh, it is so humid today. The heat has died down a little bit, but the humidity has gone up. So I don't know which is worse. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this chair to give you guys a real, real good front and center seat to this wonderful back plant. You guys ready? Look at this party. What a rewarding flower, or should I say plant? And I bought this very small years ago. I think I paid like $12 back in the day. I got it from a nursery uh, in, on Chrome called Santa Barbara. And um, apparently they had gotten a, a nursery that closed down and sold all their bat, white bat flowers to them. And I was very lucky to grab one of them. Little did I know six years ago that it was gonna still be with me and looking this gorgeous. It just takes my breath away. You know, seeing it from up here is so much better. And there's a full view of it. <laughs> it actually takes almost a whole screen. But yeah, Mama has been growing for many years and has been rewarding me heavily with beautiful flowers. Now, you guys have asked on how wet should I keep, do I keep it? If you look here, that's what it looks like. It's always moist. I never let it dry out. Now, this does have a dish underneath covered so it doesn't dry out too quickly and I, I i pretty much water it every single day they do like to be watered a lot and they'll tell you the leaves will start drooping down as soon as you see that that means it needs way more water <laughs> and yes i do have a repotting video of it it's in a conjunction video like this one that i was um repotting a giant philanopsis and the cover of it, you'll see it on, on, um, on my library. 
uh, I'm holding a very giant Phalaenopsis and it's right in that video. Now here, right below this beautiful, you know, I'm waiting impatiently for this flower to open and I'll tell you why. Because it was named after me by my buddy Bernard at BL of Orchids. Bernard, it hasn't bloomed yet. And if you guys want to purchase one, I will put the photo of it. If I find it, I think I have it somewhere. It's a gorgeous amethyst color flower, but look, it's doing wonderfully. It's growing great in here. It really likes to be in here, but no spike yet, but it's okay. We wait. Now here is a trico. Um, I was calling the wrong thing. It's trichocentrum. <laughs> I was calling trichoglottis. It's a trichocentrum. And these originally were oncidiums. I have three of these. They're not tagged. I do know they're trichocentrums. If you guys know the name of this, I believe they're hybrids because the person who gave me this was a professional hybridizer of orchids. And I believe these were his strains. Isn't that gorgeous? Those colors and that shape of flower. And this one gave me a very, very tiny spike. They normally are mammoth like this one here. Let me pull back and look at that from that and it gets way longer now you see this this one is a super cranberry reddish color with yellow in it this one's really really pretty now they call these mule leaf orchids for the obvious reasons they look like mule ear <laughs> mule ear or uh, orchid not mule leaf mule ear because they look like the ears of a, of a donkey or a mule and then my third one there also has a spike. So this year, all three of them are spiking at the same time, which is the first time that has ever happened. But it is a beautiful, beautiful um, orchid. I know that Palmer's created one or hybridized one that's called the um, Ollie Palmer. And believe it or not, I don't have that one. I need to get my hands on that one just to add it to my collection here because they do very well in my, in my greenhouse. All right, let me see if there's any other flower because I always say, man, I wish I would have remembered that flower. And today while I was watering, I fed yesterday. Um, I was seeing a lot of things. I was like, oh, I got to show that. And I got to show that. And I got to show that. <laughs> now, this just opened, I believe, two days ago. This is that one that I always get wrong, the Key Lime Star. <laughs> And I got this years, like, you know when I got this? The very first video or second video I ever made, it was a Fairchild uh, show of orchids. I think it's called the Orchids in Bloom Fair. And so Roa had these very tiny, I think for like $15. And I got, <clears throat> I got one and um, I think my friend O.C. got one. And we both put it on a mount and look at that. Look how big that is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And remember I told you guys the rustic spots, how red it was. Look how beautiful the color transitions to. It's like a mustardy gold yellow. And I'll show you the tag right there. Makes it easier on me. Rustic spots with Kelly Leah. <laughs> Now they do sell the rustic spots alone. You can get them from um, Mr. Josh at the Orchid Den. <clears throat> he has the, the rustic spots, the original. Now here for my path people, guess who is in bloom? Miss Joyce. <laughs> Miss Joyce Hasegawa or Hase. If I got it right, I'm gonna be jumping for joy. Hold on, let me see. Come on, mama. Let's focus, iPhone. Let's focus, iPhone. I got it right. Joyce Hasegawa. First time I remember the entire name. That means I'll never forget again. And I got this from my buddy Tan at Spring Waters Orchids. And it's one of the few paths that actually has a gorgeous fragrance. It's very light. Let me see if I can. If it has fragrance now. Mm, not right now, but it's a very light fragrance, almost like a jasmine type of fragrance. But it's a beautiful, beautiful path. And, I, and, and what I like about this is look at the leaves on this. 
even when it's not in bloom, it is a, it is a very pretty paphia petal. Nothing else is blooming, unfortunately. But when it does, you know, I will show you. Now, this is something I'm waiting. I already showed you guys. This is a very special dendrobium from Carl Smith. So when that is in bloom, I will show you. But can you take a look at this? <laughs> I'm like, are you going to keep giving more spikes? It's like entangling itself. It has like six spikes. Look at that. This is what it, we what is called a chocolate antler and it has beautiful curly cues very pretty flower oh there goes mr complainer what's up bruce what's up bruce what are you doing little batman <laughs> it's so adorable yes guys i'm up to 10 cats now i just can't say no i want to save them all anyway um let's see i want to show you oh let's go in here i want to show you what we're well well we again when we say we i always mean lewis when it comes to building things look what he's building for me it's going to be a beautiful concrete path all the way to the house so now when we walk here see and i don't have to we're not going to get our feet wet i have a little step up that i can go before i go into my Orchid house here, Savannah, testing out the new grounds. Hey, Savannah. And just by looking at it, you can tell already how it's gonna look when it's made out of concrete. But look how nice that is going all the way through. I feel like I'm, now I feel like I'm really touring a botanical garden. So what I told him is when he pours the concrete, he's doing it with our buddy, George Jorge, who helped build the the greenhouse the extension i told him we should pick up some of these leaves like we did with the extension of the greenhouse on the concrete floor and stamp it with some leaves so as you walk you see the different leaves that from from different plants that are in this garden so see it goes all the way to the entrance so now when i come out i'm laughing because bruce is just following me everywhere tell me if that doesn't look refined I really, really like this. So once the concrete gets poured, no more wet feet. And when we have parties or company or people coming over, some of the ladies complain because their heels or their shoes get dirty or they get dug in the ground. So now we'll have a nice smooth area to walk through. You know what, let's go in here real quick. I haven't taken you guys in here and I noticed today There was a couple of things blooming most of them from my good friends at Pearl Smith like this gorgeous gorgeous bulbophyllum I think I picked this up about a year ago it's a Doris Duke yellow bird because I have the Doris Duke uh, red and then uh, I think it was when they opened their, their showroom they had a bunch of these and I told Julian I need that in my life Look at those tones. That's true cranberry right there in yellow. And if you want to see what the regular, oh, here's another spike. What the regular Doris Duke looks like. This one's just starting to open. It has a couple of other ones in there that are about to open, but old film doors too. So if you guys like these, they do have plenty of these. I know that this is one of their um, top selling bubble films and they, they usually have a lot uh, at hand. And I'll tell you, it's a really, really gorgeous bubble film. The, the profile of this flower is just absolutely stunning. Super, super cool. Prehistoric looking. Beautiful textures. Beautiful color. Through and through. 
and those little hairs are just so adorable how they just move with the wind now I've showed you guys a Jim Clarkson also from Curl Smith this is one of the few bulb films that actually have a gorgeous fragrance again it's a light fragrance not very strong but it is a nice fragrance nonetheless and I've always said the profile on this is also just perfect oh, the fan in here feels good now here is one that is kind of some of on the way out this is a dendro kylum but it's a tinier one cobianum it's a species and I kept on thinking that I had a dendro kylum but not like the one that I just showed you guys from s and w I've had this for almost four years now and it is a very slow grower I got to start cleaning up my my little weeds out here um, it is a very slow grower I bought it with like only three leaves but it does bloom twice a year for me I, it always gives me beautiful um, inflorescence and here's the flower how, how tiny the flowers are very very cute like little mini orchids all the way through and these are not in bloom but these are my pride and joy my very own registered bubble films thanks to my friends at Carl Smith they were so generous to do that I will always always I mean there's no words for that I always said that there's no word for for that type of gesture you can thank them, you can show your appreciation, but it's just, it's such a wow thing. Like these flowers right here are a wow thing. <laughs> now you guys know I had said I had given up on anything that had to do, let me grab, because I want to get the right, and I think it's called something bird. Anything with zygos, right? Bluebirds, here you go. See, no sure bluebirds. Of all my zygos, this is the only one that is still alive and blooming absolutely gorgeous flowers. This is a very nicely fragrant, um, I'm trying to move the fan so it's not, not so noisy. Very fragrant flower. The colors are gorgeous. This is what they call the blue in an orchid. It's really more like a light violet, but when the light hits it in the right, the right place it shows you a nice blue hue now if you look right there what does that look like to you that looks like a little bird thus the name bluebird <laughs> and right next to it is a fowl that just seems to give and give and give and give and give and never stops blooming and I love it for it such pretty tones my favorite tones of all time and right next to it it's the cochleata now, I don't have a um, tag for it I'll put the full name but they call this a clamshell orchid and I'll tell you why right there <laughs> it looks like a clamshell and what I love about this orchid is that if you look at it it always comes out in reverse right the the labellum is upwards and the three petals are downwards so that's one of the things that makes it very unique on top of the um, top of the fact that the labellum is so flat out and round like a shell not many orchids have that type of shape but it is such a pretty pretty flower and of course more fowls down here these are standard fowls these are the last uh, of the flowering because everything was flowering in the spring. And as you can see now, everything has died back. It never looks the same without flowers. With flowers, it looks crazy beautiful. If I can find a video or a photo of it, I'll insert it right there. But even though this has no flowers, it's still a pretty stand. It looks like a nice little flower stand. All right, guys, I don't think I have anything else in bloom that I can see. I don't see anything coming out, so let's move on. I'm going to take you now to my little island because there, 
there is another thing I call my pride and joy, which was a hit or miss back and forth. <laughs> and it finally took and it is blooming beautifully. And I will show you right now. Some of you may know already where I'm going because you know this area, but this is the national flower of Cuba. It's called La Mariposa, La Flor Mariposa. And tell me if that doesn't look like two white butterflies. That's what mariposa stands for in English. Now the fragrance on this is very strong. It smells like gardenia. Yes, it smells like pure gardenia. They're very hard to find. I think there's some areas in Miami that do sell them. It's considered a ginger. When you hear that word, you always equal it to lots of water. Gingers love a lot of water. They grow very close to um, wetlands and areas in Cuba that the grounds are very saturated and moist and very moist. So if you have this in your yard, you want to make sure, see, that your grounds are always moist. They're not dry. Now, granted, I just watered an hour ago, uh, but I always try to keep in the hot, hot summer. I water twice a day in the morning and in the afternoon. But look at that, how pretty. And it was a viewer of mine and friend, Nudies. Nudies, check it out. Tell me if I did well. <laughs> now, I do have that little screen because it holds it very well because they get so tall that they bend. And so by doing this, I was actually able to grow them and save them from breaking or cracking. And I think this is a magic spot for them. I'm hoping that this whole area here becomes all that ginger because as you, as you can see it's already growing on the outside and shooting new shoots so it's a very happy plant i wish i can like transmit the fragrance because it, it really is a beautiful fragrance and a gorgeous flower if you guys have a yard this would be a beautiful addition to your yard hey noah there's noah and malachi today today you guys are getting a treat of all my kitties Malachi! Do you guys notice he has a heart print on the side of his body? <laughs> a perfect heart print. Hey guys! See? There's a little heart print. And then my little girl. She's the sweetheart of the group here. Right, Mama? Savannah. And there's Noah, the troublemaker. Noah! You little troublemaker! <laughs> And then Malachi, he's always running from everybody, except when it's time to eat. <laughs> then he's super happy to be around you. All right, guys, I think that is it. I think I've given you guys a nice, short, but nice tour of, oh wait, I didn't show you this. And I don't have a tag for it. So if you guys know what this is, please leave it in the comment section. But I love this little dendrobium. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous little dendrobium. Look at it. Very well cared. Uh, the leaves are very, I was going to say, very well cared for. Of course, Nelson, you're the one caring for them. <laughs> very green. <laughs> I'm patting myself in the back. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the heat, guys. I'm getting a little delirious. You did good, Nell. You did good. <laughs> oh, and scene. All right, guys, here, if you guys know what this is, what kind of dendrobium this is, I would highly appreciate if you leave it in the comments. I did have a tag. I don't remember where I got it. I don't know if it was Vicky's. Maybe it was Vicky's. But it's blooming for me for the very first time. And then right next to it, this is being awaited and not patiently. This is one of the most gorgeous dendrobiums you guys could ever lay, lay eyes on. I will put a picture of it because talking about it gives absolutely no justice. But anyways, thank you, Kelly, for sending me this all the way from Hawaii. And it made it so well here and look how beautiful and healthy she's been. I always tell my, my friends and viewers that give me gifts of orchids that I take extra care for them. As you can see, I do. And it's giving me a spike for the very first time in a whole, what, year and a half, maybe, that she sent it. So, Kelly, I know you're watching. Yours just bloomed and it gave you a spectacular show. I can't wait for this one to do the same. 
All right, I think we are done. I'm looking around. Um, I mean, the only thing I have, uh, no, the only thing I have here is um, uh, Louise Fuchs, which by the way, I cleared it out with Michael at RF. It is Louise, not Lois. And Louise was uh, Bob Fuchs' grandmother. So it was named after her. And this is one of the most intense smelling Schomburgias that you guys could ever own. It is just incredible. And I, I tell you this, you know why? Because even the dead ones, the ones that die, still has fragrance. That's how strong it is. It'll have fragrance even as the flower is dying, which not many orchids can do that. But look at that, how beautiful. <clears throat> now, let me see, do I have a tag for it? I'll just put it down there. Miramarcofala Louise Fuke. All right, this here has a very sentimental meaning. I wasn't gonna share this, but you know, you guys are my family and I've shared a lot of things with you guys. This is a frangipani or a plumeria uh, plant, but this one has yellow and pink, which is very rare. I've never seen this one. I have the yellow one and I've seen the pink one, but to have yellow and pink, and this was gifted to me. It was just a cutting. And this is the first time it blooms. Um, and the reason is very special is because a very good, close and dear friend who, who was very much into plants has just passed away. It was a great loss in our group of friends and family. And when he would come, come here, he would just absorb this whole place. And you can see how much he loved it. And he would always bring me a plant or something. And they were always special. And he said, this has both colors. And I thought he was like, you know, pulling my leg. And I go, what? His name was Javier. And I go, Javi, what are you talking about? It has both colors. There's only pink or yellow. He goes, nope, this one has both colors. Well, two, maybe three years ago is when he gave me this. And it's gone to this size. I have it in a pot. And when he passed away on that week it bloomed for the very first time so this is so so special to me javi if you're up there listening i will always remember you especially when i look at these flowers because you really you really shocked me when i saw that it was yellow and pink i go wow he was right so this little section here is dedicated to him he was someone I used to love sitting down and just talking, talk about plants. He was from Ecuador, so imagine. He had a lot of knowledge of exotic plants and, and all kinds of botanicals. All right, guys. Well, you know what? It's on its way out, but my arachnus still looking great. I have shown it. If you guys want to go to the last What's in Bloom, I think I showed it there. But it um, still has some flowers, but it looked a lot better in the What's in Bloom. All right, I have no more for you. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's anything else, but I think that's it. So let's turn this puppy around. All right, that is it. Short and sweet. <laughs> it's really not that short, it's over 30 minutes, I'm sure. But compared to my other What's in Blooms, I know it's short, but I wanted to show you some extra stuff. I mean, you guys are getting almost three What's in Bloom this month, so it's a big treat. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was no confusion with the haul. Remember the first three were the haul. Everything else was already here. <laughs> All right, guys, I will be seeing you very soon. There's a lot of shows coming up. Now is the season where we start figuring out which is the show we're gonna go to next because they start overlapping. This weekend coming up is the great exotic, well, I think it's called a plant exotic. You'll see it at the end. It'll be this weekend, September 16. I'm lost in the dates. That's why I always put the posters in the end. But anyways, there's that show. There's the Mount Botanical Gardens in West Palm Beach. If you guys haven't gone to that park, it is excellent. Just the park itself is wonderful to walk around. It's beautiful. It has a lot of artwork. They're going to have their Plantapalooza, which I believe they have it twice a year, every six months. And they have great vendors there, great plants. They have beautiful artwork to sell. So if you're in the area or just want to take a nice little trip to West Palm Beach, I highly, highly, highly suggest you do because you will not be disappointed. It's a great place to go. And that's why I'm torn between that 
and the Tamiami. Uh, it's going to be at Tamiami, by the way, the other, the plant show. It's more of an aeroid plant show is what they're doing. I think it's the first of its kind. I'm not sure. So I don't know if I'm going to go to that or West Palm Beach. Terry and I are like kind of like doing this, <laughs> seeing where it lands. But I don't know yet. Most likely I'll end up in Tamiami only because it's closer and, um, and it's indoors. And this summer heat has just been unbearable as you guys can see i'm here melting <laughs> so there'll be a lot of shows that i'll be attending to a lot of events so stay tuned for that always stay to the very end so you can see um what's coming up i put all the information there and all as always thank you for you guys who donated uh this month you have been very generous you have helped me a lot and um, I, as I say, I put it right back into my channel. I use it for gas or for food when I go out to the events, admission to the events, the admission. Not that they're expensive, but when you go to like eight, nine, 10 of them at $25, $35 a pop, it adds up. So with that, you guys are helping me greatly. So I thank you for hitting that super thanks and also hit that subscribe button because the subscribe is free. You don't have to pay for that. And also, as I always say, don't forget to hit like. I'm all. I'm, I'm starting to sound like um, Natalia from Just One More Orchid. Martha says to hit like and subscribe. <laughs> so it applies to me too. Anyways, guys, it is over. I will not keep you here any longer. Thank you so much for taking this little tour with me. Let me know what you think about the improvements uh, or the blooms. And I will see you on my next episode. I'm Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always. Hold on. Come here, Mama. You want to you wanna close the channel with me? Always keep it green and cute. <laughs> see you guys next time. Mama, you close the channel. <laughs>